and not being hijacked by my ego when you talk about leadership and making good decisions. It's really easy to make bad decisions when my emotions and my thoughts that are telling me one thing, which I know are not me and I know are not true, but they're pretty compelling at times. I think Einstein said that reality is an illusion, albeit a persistent one. And so sometimes those thoughts are pretty persistent, telling me that I need to say something. And I always come back to this Viktor Frankl quote that's um, A Man's Search for Meeting, great book. I'm, I'm sure you've read it. It goes something like this. In between stimulus and response, there's space. In that space, we have the power to choose. And um, in, that, in that space, we have the power to grow and, and freedom, something like that. And what I've learned is that everybody is sort of self-interested and self-motivated. And to a certain extent, that's our genetic programming. That's how we survive. We need to have a certain amount of fear, and we need to have instincts so that we can take care of ourselves and, and um, make sure that we come first. But sometimes our instincts can go awry, and meditation is not a cure-all. It's like brushing your teeth. You know, you brush your teeth today. It doesn't mean you don't have to brush them for a month. You gotta, you gotta, right? you gotta keep up your personal hygiene. So um, I gotta keep being mindful and meditating because my, e my ego and my thoughts and my narrative comes back to haunt me quickly. I've learned though, through mindfulness and meditation, it's not all about me as much as I want it to be all about me. Um, my problems, my demands, my desires um, are mine. And I need to have some respect for other people's desires and wants and wishes. And so what, that, what meditation gives me is space. What I do is not respond. What I do is take some time and let it flow through me and recognize what in me that's triggering. You know, what insecurities um, in me are now activated. So it's been a game changer for me. And, and I really mean it that this is an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing class. It's, it's such an important skill to cultivate. Because I, I think it is a skill. I think happiness and um, contentment and satisfaction is a skill. And so when you talk about leadership, when people talk about um, the principles and what you need to do to be a great leader, it starts with being self-aware. It starts with being able to not be hijacked by your ego, to, to react in accordance with logic and reason, and not these thoughts that say, well, did he just say that to me? Well, I'm going to show him how smart I am. Um, to act in accordance with your values. That's what mindfulness helps you do, which is amazing in terms of not only being a great leader, but being happy and being content. And so for me, I can't imagine anything that's been more powerful as a skill that I've learned in my professional career than mindfulness and meditation. So that's kind of the maybe high level or maybe more than high level of how I got into it. I'm happy to answer questions if people have any.